So if somebody's locking the flight controls, you gotta do something quickly. My controls. My controls. I got the airplane. The most important takeaway from this video is that a student or pilot who's frozen on the flight controls can absolutely kill you. So if the student or the pilot doesn't let go, what do you do about it? Let me tell you a story. I was a new CFI years ago, very green, very eager. I was ready to jump in the right seat for just about anyone. I just wanted to fly and teach. It's a beautiful spring day. I'm at the airport and another flight instructor asked me to fill in for him. Absolutely, count me in. So I've made a few mistakes on this particular flight. Number one, I didn't get an adequate briefing from the student's instructor. If I had, I might've known that the student has some anxiety around stalls. More on that later. So I meet the student pilot at the airplane. He's 6'3", 200 something, super strong guy. Clearly, he knows his way around the gym. He was upbeat, he was enthusiastic, he was ready to go. The best kind of student. I always brief the positive exchange of controls. They're always gonna know who's flying the airplane. And we did on that day too. We did brief on what the lesson would entail. We'd go out to the practice area, do some steep turns, do some slow flight, just to see how things were going. He did tell me at that time, he was very clear. He said he had some anxiety around stalls. He just wasn't ready for that. I took that in, but as we'll learn later, I didn't quite listen as much as I should have. So we pre-flight the airplane, we hop in, we taxi out, we take off and head out to the practice area. The student had only a few hours in the airplane, but his command of the plane was good. Nailed his altitude, he nailed his headings. The area did a series of steep turns that were well within standard and would pass any check ride. We transitioned then to slow flight. From slow flight, we did some ground reference maneuvers. No problems there either. The student, was he was on fire. With confidence I probably shouldn't have had, I thought, let's get this guy to lay the dragon, the stall dragon. If he can fly slow flight, steep turns, and ground reference maneuvers so well, surely he can handle a little stall. We were in slow flight. I talked to the student and say, hey, we're going to pull the power back and we're just going to hold our altitude. Once you hear the horn, you feel the buffet, and the nose goes over, all you have to do is just release a little back pressure and decrease the angle of attack, and we'll be flying again. So the power comes out, he holds his altitude, airspeed is decreasing, the horn's going off, there's the buffet, and then what next? The stall. It happened in just a few seconds. But what happened next wasn't just a relaxing of the back pressure to start flying again. The student had pushed the elevator full forward, straight to the firewall. Not an inch, not three inches, all the way. We were staring right at the earth. I told the student, pitch up, pitch up. No response. I said, my controls. However, nothing. The student was frozen. Full forward, elbows locked. He was not moving and he wasn't talking. As a new CFI, I'd heard some stories in the periphery about uh, pilots or students that freeze and, and how that can be a dangerous situation. But I didn't realize the gravity of it until it happened to me. But after not getting the flight controls, I then attempted to, to overpower him on the controls. Guess what? That didn't work either. So with altitude decreasing quickly, I repeatedly hit him on his right elbow and forearm, and he did let go. I take control of the airplane and pull us out of a dive. We leveled off, calmed down, and we took a moment. We needed a moment. Surprising to me, the student's enthusiastic attitude came back relatively quickly. We finished the flight with no problem, all was well. What had just happened? Let's get a little scientific here. When a person perceives a threat, there are several responses that may kick off. We've got flight, we've got fight, and we have freeze. And these reactions happen without thinking. It's just built into the person's DNA. Not everyone responds the same way. Of those three responses, the one you probably need to be the most aware of is the freeze response. The aviation freeze response it really is a shutdown response. Any of these responses, they're not a conscious decision. The response just happens without thinking. The freeze response presents itself at several times. In our example, with stalls. And something seemingly as benign as a takeoff, it can happen there too. So you have to be prepared at all times. The first trigger that should put you on alert, the student tells you they have anxiety or they're nervous about something. Another sign is the student's breathing. It can be very rapid or it can be very shallow, or they can even hold their breath. They may appear detached, emotionally just not there. They start to lose connectedness with what's happening. The student may become physically unable to move, as if they're frozen in place. They are just wherever their mind has taken them, and it's not in the airplane with you at that moment. The risk is obvious. If they're frozen on the controls, things can go very badly very quickly. The instructor community and aviation community has lost too many people to this response. Let's go in the air and try some things out. 
Please don't attempt this on your own. This is for demonstration purposes only. My controls. My controls. Verbally, we said, I have the controls. If you're successful, you've gotten the controls back very quickly. However, if you don't, then you have to try something else. So if somebody freezes on you and they're locked up on the controls, you can start by hitting them in the hand or the forearm, right? Hopefully that will do it. Uh, in my case, it did, and the guy let go, and I took controls and we recovered. If that doesn't work, you got to keep going. And it's probably a good idea to keep coming up the arm. Finger seven, Romeo Charlie, trying to maintain 2,300. Turn right, heading one. The next place being field be one the armpit, off. right? Sensitive, lots of nerves. Nobody, nobody likes to be punched there. Turn to a or poked there. You don't know what's coming. But if I go in the armpit, like, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Looks like there's some stuff. Right? Over Cinco and just and west. Another technique is to remove the student's vision. Some people say that if you cover the person's eyes, so we're going to try that. If I do that, I mean, is your okay? So you I'm did like let, you yeah. did let go. Yeah. Did you that? Did you think about that? Did you do that on purpose? No. Okay. So you wanted to just, you want to see? That, I I honestly didn't think that would work. I mean, I didn't think about let go. I just did. Yeah. One other thing you can try, and then and we're getting really violent here, and I'm not going to do it to you. Uh. Is the headset right here? If you were to take your fist and just pop the person in the head, yeah, in the headset, the air pressure, the air yeah. pressure is gonna, it will be concussive almost. But it's a desperate situation that you got to do something about. So you can't feel bad about um, doing whatever you have to do to get control of the airplane. So this one's a little more difficult to get to, but on. In some airplanes, there's a bar that connects the elevator to both flight controls. So if you were to stick your foot in there and find the bar, and let's say you're pitched up, you could push down with your foot and overpower the person that's on the controls. We're not just talking about the flight controls. This also extends to the airplane's throttle. If on takeoff or landing, somebody grabs the throttle and doesn't let go, right? Well, like put your hand on the throttle. Three miles from final approach. If I come from the top down, it can make you pull it all the way out, right? So you got to go from the bottom up. Hit. By hitting their hand from below, we got their hand off the throttle. We didn't get an uncommanded change of power. That could be troublesome. So after it's over, there's still a little bit of an aftermath that needs to be dealt with. It's important to help calm the person down, encourage them to take deep breaths, to relax, give them positive words and affirmation that everything is going to be okay. After you get on the ground, you probably want to talk about the event and what happened to make sure they understand the danger that was there so they can perhaps recognize this in the future. As flight instructors, we're not psychologists or doctors, but if you see these tendencies repeatedly in a student, there may be an underlying mental health condition or anxiety that they need some assistance with. In that case, it's probably a good idea to pause training and have them seek some professional help. Fly safe, everyone. Do, do that again, yeah. and I'm gonna say like my controls, and just don't let go, and don't say anything. Okay. Like you're locked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My controls. I got the airplane. My controls. Five, six, 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 three thousand. You can't smile. I know. Just to maintain three thousand, and uh, we'll go the bloopers. Not a good actor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>